Today the task is to put this, this front differential, into my E61 2006 BMW 530XI um, because apparently when something like this falls out of the side of your front differential it's time for a new one. Uh, so, got the wheels off, got it sitting safely on jack stands, uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. I'm making it up as I go along though, so bear with me. To try to get the axle shafts out of the differential enough to pull it without taking the axle nut and dropping the whole uh, drive shaft out. So I'm going to try to just drop the hub itself with the pinch bolt uh, to see if that gives me enough wiggle room and save some time disconnecting and reconnecting and trying to torque to uh, a gazillion foot-pounds on that nut. Uh, so wish me luck. Millimeter hex wrench and a uh, 16 millimeter closed in wrench to remove the tie rod or the um, sway bar link. Millimeter wrench and uh, socket or air, hammer, air wrench uh, on the pinch bolt. Should take it right off. Okay, that came out nicely, uh, mainly because I've replaced this bolt already once. Uh, Keep in mind that that will also loosen up this uh, hanger which has all the connections. And for getting the um, pinch clamp loose on the, on the uh, hub here is to use a quarter inch socket or quarter inch drive which should just fit into the slot where it's pinched and then whenever you turn it to the ah, about 45 degree angle it should loosen it up and is now is now loose and will slide off. So I'm going to do both hands so I don't drop this thing on my kneecap. The uh, whole thing fell out nicely. Uh, it seems to have given me some uh, quite a bit of movement on the outside of the axle here so uh, I should be able to loosen up the inside, push it out towards the outside here. Uh, without disconnecting anything else. So uh, if that works, I've saved a boatload of time. Uh, notice that there is a uh, aligning tabs here that go into the slot in the back whenever you're reassembling it. And also it's handy to note the line of the dirt where uh, the pinch clamp was originally installed to so you can get it back at the same height. Uh, always a good idea. Uh, saves you some alignment issues down the line. There's the uh, inside of the CV axle. This is the differential, so I've just got to push the CV axle out that way, uh, which is going to be accomplished with a uh, uh, pry bar here and a love tap with a hammer. Should pop it right out of the oily, nasty, broken differential. The uh, the axle nose a little bit uh, with a uh, jack stand to get a better angle on it. Made it a little easier to push it out. As you can see, I've now got quite a bit out there. I'm going to go back outside the car and move everything outboard until I clear the axle from the differential. Uh, clean, uh, free and clear. It's resting on the motor mount, which is probably going to have to come out, so I'm probably going to have to wiggle things around a little bit before I actually get the differential out, but uh, all I had to do was disconnect the, uh, the pinch bolt here on the, uh, the hub and drop it without doing all the suspension and uh, other stuff, so now onto the right. All right, we're, now we're over on the right side, and as I mentioned, uh, if you have the auto-leveling, auto-adjusting Xenon headlights on your E60-61, uh, you're gonna have to disconnect this uh, this little plastic linkage here. Otherwise, this arm breaks and you have to wire it back together like I did. So, uh, should just be a 10 millimeter nut on the bottom to pull it out, and everything else should start out pretty much the same as the other side, which will be uh, dropping the uh, dropping the whole knuckle via just the pinch bolt and letting it hang and getting enough movement to uh, pull the axle out of the differential. So. Let's get on it. Side, I'm going to put the um, going to put the hub and the knuckle up on a uh, tr on a jack stand so that the axle is a little bit straighter going in. It seems like having it hanging with a full weight is a little too much 
makes it harder to uh, extract it from the uh, from the differential. So now I'm going to go back under and try to pry it out of the differential. It's like the uh, these hydraulic lines that go to the transmission are going to have to uh, come out. So uh, doesn't look like a big deal. There's a single 10 millimeter bolt there uh, holding them in a uh, pinch clamp. So should be just a matter of loosening that up and, and relocating it someplace safe while I'm doing this. Start working on there's four bolts that bolt from the outside the left wheel well into the oil pan. Uh, the two on the bottom are easy enough to get to. Uh, the one on the top is visible there. Uh, I think I can move that hydraulic line and get to it. Uh, the one the upper front one is really difficult. Uh, it looks I have a uh, extension on a wobble socket at the end uh, to reach it uh, with any luck I'll hit with impact it'll come right out otherwise I'll have to go to plan B came out uh, fairly easy uh, might be more tricky to get in but you can reach it with your fingers to insert it and get it started or to get it the rest of the way out so that's good news I'm gonna go to the upper rear bolt now it promises to be a fight that the uh, that big motor mount is going to have to come out sooner or later, uh, if nothing else, is to get the uh, uh, to get the differential out of that area because this is right in the way. So I'm just uh, going for the top bolt from the most easily accessible spot, right at the back of the motor here, basically. Uh, just a lot of extensions and uh, going in for the bottom. Uh, the top one, by the way, was an E12, and the bottom two are E10s. So uh, the front one can be reached with just a regular ratchet, uh, although not with one hand, so you'll have to trust me. It was easier just to approach it from the top like the other one by stacking up an even taller stack of extensions and uh, hand placing the, uh, the socket on the bolt and then heading back up north. To the uh, to the top of the stack where I will attach a uh, air wrench and unscrew it from up here. Okay, this one uh, was a little trickier. Uh, I ended up having to place the uh, uh, the, the extension stack with the socket on top of the the uh, on top of the motor mount where it would stay while I climbed under the car. I placed it by hand on the uh, on the bolt. So now I'm just going to climb back up on top, uh, hook up the air wrench, and start twisting. With any luck it'll come right out. Make sure that that bottom uh, extension is a wobble so it has the, uh, it can get, it can work around um, the steering gear there, the steering, uh, the steering shaft. To support the engine, probably lift it just a little bit to get the clearance I need to get the differential out. I'll probably have to drop the subframe a little bit on that side, maybe both sides. Um, so I will have to support the engine. There's a special BMW tool that costs a lot of money that you can buy to do that. You can buy a cheap one from Harbor Freight that probably works, that hangs the engine from the uh, engine compartment via the fender lips. Uh, or you can go old school and use a floor jack and a couple blocks of wood to protect the uh, protect the oil pan and just uh, lift it from underneath. I'm not really going to bother to lift it too far right now. Just want to take the uh, the weight off so that I can start uh, working on getting that um, motor mount out of the way. Okay. 
and there it goes. You can see it's easily easy to lift the engine. Just don't want to lift it too far and get into uh, start stressing wires, cables, hoses, assemblies, uh, and other expensive BMW parts. I'm going to be dropping this subframe, loosening it up a little bit so I can get the uh, the extra space I need to get that motor mount out and most likely the uh, differential. Uh, it's held in by four major bolts. Two are inside these tubes up front. Uh, one is in the back corner there. One is in the back corner there, kind of centered. Uh, so I'm going to be dropping them, but not all the way, just enough to uh, give me an inch or so of extra movement. Uh, if you take them out, things might get interesting. Uh, there's heavy stuff bolted to them and is supported by them. So um, if you need to drop it more than just a little bit, I would suggest getting some threaded rods of the appropriate uh, threading and some washers and nuts and using those to lower them gently. Uh, or you can use, uh, I, I may end up using another um, floor jack to support this side and take the bolts out if I need that clearance. Not a big deal. Uh, let's see how this goes. Uh, I'm going to put the foam to loose. Uh, I took that one out all together. Uh, no movement on the subframe, so obviously it's bolted in places that I'm not seeing yet. It turned out not to be such a big deal. I was able to rotate and remove the motor mount without any movement of the uh, uh, subframe at all. I did move the motor up just a tiny bit more and that was just enough to do it. So now I'm going to go after those bottom two bolts uh, which I can get to now. Or, or the, the top bolt and then the bottom two uh, should be much more accessible. I should mention that I did relocate this uh, plastic panel just three eight millimeter bolts and fold it out of the way. Uh, that was where the motor mount was. That's the path to that rear bolt. I've got an extension with a wobble on the end long enough to come out and put a uh, put a ratchet or an air ratchet on it. 16 millimeter short socket, long socket will interfere with that hydraulic line which you don't want to do. I'm trying not to remove it all together so I think this will allow me to uh, prevent doing that. So I'm going to put the phone down. And... Okay, the, uh, the top one came out just fine. Uh, bottom ones uh, Probably easier to do the front one with a wobble extension from the wheel well. Uh, the last one underneath is just a good old-fashioned wrench or a, uh, just a short socket and a, uh, and a ratchet. So that'll be easy. At that point, with any luck, I believe my uh, differential should be loose and uh, see if there's enough room to get it out or not. If there is, happy day. And this is the easy one, and always save the easy one for last. If you do it first, it just makes the other ones hard by letting the entire mechanism twist against the remaining bolts. So do the hardest one first, work your way down to the easiest one. So, as I expected, I have a loose differential. Now, if I am truly lucky, I'll be able to get it out without doing much extra else, uh, but not with one hand and not holding a phone, so I promise I'll let you know how it goes. Well, it's out. Uh, it was a little more complicated. I ended up raising the engine more. Uh, I found that there were another set of bolts uh, up high on the subframe near the axles. Uh, that had to be loosened. That gave me a little bit of freedom. Uh, I cranked down on the back of the subframe and stuck a uh, wire brush in there. Probably not the smartest thing to use if I slip. Um, I got just enough clearance. I ended up having to cut a notch out of the um, out of the um, motor mount cup. It doesn't really do anything. It only it's supported by the edges, so it's plenty strong uh, without that chunk. And that gave me a little bit of extra freedom to move it around, which was a good thing. Probably not necessary in the end, but it sure made me feel good to cut something up. So now I'm going to try to get the new one in. It's a uh, luckily I verified they are exactly the same, same numerical ratio drive, which is a good thing, of course. Uh, so hopefully it goes in easier than it came out.